You know what, this may look like a nondescript box, but inside, it's got something pretty exciting. How's it going guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. When we saw the HTC One Series announcement at Mobile World Congress, well we got one of those in the house right now. Here's the HTC One S, the global version at that. Let's take a look at it in the unboxing, but first some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like this for use in our One Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, your web, all that stuff on any phone you get at Best Buy Mobile. They'll help you walk out working. Let's take a look at HTC One S. Special thanks to HTC for hooking us up with a global review unit. Let's take a look, starting right now. Here's the HTC One S. It's one of three devices that HTC announced at Mobile World Congress as part of their One Series, the One X, the One S, and the One V. Now, it's important to note, and first of all, special thanks to HTC for hooking us up with this review unit, but it's important to note that this device I'm reviewing or taking a look at right here in the unboxing is the global version. So we'll see a T-Mobile specific version with T-Mobile bands, and of course, the T-Mobile branding as we get closer to the launch on T-Mobile. But to give you a rundown of the specs here, it has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor with the Adreno 225 GPU. It has a 4.3 inch display. Ooh, feel that bubble wrap. Or I, can't, I guess you can't really feel it because you're watching it on camera. 4.3 inch display, super AMOLED display, 540 by 960 pixels. It's got an 8 megapixel camera on the back. Look at that. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. And that's a beautiful device. That comes in two uh, two colors, and I can't remember exactly how they word it on the HTC's end, but it's basically gray and black. It's like gray with a, uh, a certain, I'll have to go back and look at how they word it, but it's like gray with a beautiful uh, carbon something something or another, or black with a beautiful something or another. I'm sure that's, that's really descriptive for you. But I'm the one you've been waiting for. Well, the One X was the one I've been waiting for too, so which one is the one? I guess it's gonna depend on what you prefer. And kind of a spoiler alert, before I do that, let's see. No, no real noise on that one. Kind of a spoiler alert for me, at least. I kind of prefer the One S uh, in terms of design. This one feels a little bit easier to hold in the hand. It has that 4.3 inch display as opposed to the 4.7 inch display over on the um, One X. Now, obviously the One X is an HD display. This is not, 540 by 960 pixels. It does have 16 million colors, so that's nice. And of course, it's running Android 4.0 with uh, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich with Sense 4, so that's very cool as well. So let's take a look, start that up, and I'm going to let you see the boot animation in just a second. Micro USB charging port over here on the left side. You've got your buttons down here at the bottom, back, home, and then of course your uh, running applications button. You see how quickly that started up, and you got quick boot with HTC, of course. Volume rocker over here, camera on the back with a flash, and Beats Audio installed as well. So let's take a look, and I, you know, I'm going to be interested to see, and we'll start this up, United Kingdom, yes, so it's going to be interesting to see how this device performs with a dual core processor as opposed to the quad core NVIDIA Tegra 3 that we've been used to or been seeing on the One X. Now, obviously, I have the One X and the One S in the office, so it'd be kind of cool to see the dual core uh, Snapdragon processor performance here as opposed to the quad core NVIDIA Tegra 3 performance over on the unlocked uh, global HTC One X that I have in my office. So here you go, you get the typical accessories here, you get the HTC AC adapter module, HTC USB cable, and then you get some earbuds as well, all on HTC's cornstarch bags, which are uh, environmentally friendly. So that's a nice little touch that they're continuing along with uh, on HTC side. So you got your earbuds here, nothing really uh, big or anything to write home about there. And of course, this box will look uh, different when you see it, most likely, in a retail launch. This is just the, uh, the unlocked, unbranded box. So again, I'm the one you've been waiting for. So let's take a look at this. Insert SIM card. Let's skip that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and use mobile data or Wi-Fi. We're gonna go through these settings pretty quickly. But it's a good looking device, much like the One X. It's a beautiful looking phone, and you've got kind of a curved display here. You can see the, the uh, display is kind of raised up, and I don't have the One X within uh, arm's length, or else I would, uh, I would show you. And I don't have the uh, One X within arm's length, or else I would show you, but they're both pretty similar in terms of design, just in the way they look, although obviously this one's gray, and the One X model that I have that you've seen in the unboxing and review videos is black, but still a good looking device, got a nice cutout here for the earpiece, front facing camera up there, and then I can go through and take a look at this. Next, agree, agree, yes, 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 skip, and let's just go ahead and get through this stuff, come on now. There we go, loading up now. So again, uh, HTC Sense 4, Android 4.0 on this device, you've got seven home screens, and a new form, or a new uh, look for HTC with uh, Sense 4, no, I don't wanna show the quick tips. And you can see there, seven home screens. Carousel form factor as well, and you'll see some stuff from the uh, older versions of Sense when I turn on the power button, which is up here up top with the uh, micro USB charging port. And you can see this removes where I can see the micro SIM card slot, and then I can see a nice little blue color back there with the, uh, with the camera. So I wanna put that back on. Let's see how that goes back on. There we go, okay, pops back on like that. And I can come back out here and get my nasty fingerprints on it. 
and you can see your typical HTC setup. Now, much like the HTC One X, you've got this new interface here with Sense 4, and it looks beautiful. The color scheme looks nice, and you can see I can set the current timer. I can swipe away like typical Android 4.0 notifications. I can go into settings as well and see how that looks on the Sense side. You can see some influence that Sense 4 has on Ice Cream Sandwich, but again, it's not as much. And one thing I've noticed from reviewing the One X, now we got the One X, by the time you're watching this video, you're going to see these obviously, but I've had the One X for about a week now. And I'll tell you, you know, Sense 4 does a pretty good job between balancing between, you know, being bloaty and being useful. I think it's a very useful operating system. It's not, or a very useful user interface. It's not as bloaty as previous versions of Sense. It works pretty well with Ice Cream Sandwich. I think they've done a good job of uh, bringing those together. But still, same interface here. Personalization options. I can come in here and take a look at the skin, the wallpapers, the lock screen style. And one of my personal favorite new lock screens that we see on Sense 4 is this productivity one where I can apply it and I can see all my messages and all my missed calls from one screen. So you miss three calls, you get a text message, you get uh, an email or calendar reminder, they'll all pop up right here when you get those. And you can either swipe those down into the ring and take a look at them, or you, know, you can, of course, swipe the ring up and get into the menu pretty easily. New dock down here is a result of Sense4 as well, and you can see the application, seven digital. Now again, this is looks like a UK branded, or I shouldn't say branded, but a UK uh, specific unlock device, because seven digital is UK, if I remember right. But you do get the typical stuff here. Google Plus, Google Messenger pre-installed, Dropbox, Notes, and then you get Polaris Office, SoundHound, you get a Wi-Fi hotspot as well, and then you get Frequent and Downloads down here, and then you get the shortcuts to Play Shop, and then menu and then search as well up top. Play Store in the US, Play Shop in the UK. So a good looking device on all. Let's take a look at the Sense keyboard. We're gonna load up a message here and it's the same thing that you've seen on the HTC One X. Similar looking keyboard. Portrait to landscape transitions are nice and fast, but again, you're dealing with a 4.3 inch display here as opposed to a 4.7 inch display. So hey there, how are you doing? But again, I find this to be very pocketable and much easier to hold in a one-handed operation. Now, obviously, if you're doing a lot of YouTube videos, you're doing a lot of media, like you're looking at web pages out on a regular basis, you're probably going to want the One X for that bigger 4.7 inch display. But for me, I think this is a nice balance between a nice size screen. 4.3 inches is a nice healthy balance, in my opinion, and you still get some room to do some web browsing, some room to watch videos, but you get something that's pocketable. Although the downside is you obviously lose the HD resolution on the screen. So that's something you're going to have to decide if you want to deal with a trade-off. Now, obviously, if you're in the U.S. and you're waiting you know, for your One X or your One S branded versions, you're obviously kind of stuck unless you want to switch carriers. AT&T is getting the One X. T-Mobile is getting the One S. So you know, if you're going to stick with your carriers, you're kind of uh, locked in there. But if you're looking to buy one unlocked, take a look at both of these or at least try to get an idea as to what you prefer more. A bigger display that's high resolution or perhaps something that's more pocketable uh, but you do lose, of course, the quad-core processor on the international version in place of a, uh, a dual-core Snapdragon processor. So good-looking device. I don't have a SIM card in it or else I'd load up the, uh, the browser, but you get the same look and feel here. And interestingly enough, just in my quick seven minutes with it that this video has been going on, it seems to be relatively responsive and equally fast as the uh, quad-core processor device, the NVIDIA Tegra 3 based One X. So I'm going to put this to the test. We're going to do some comparisons and see if this thing really holds up with its dual-core Snapdragon processor to its uh, brother, the One X, with the uh, quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the HTC One S, both the global version, which I have right here in this nice gray color, and the T-Mobile version when we get those review units in. So keep it locked on the site. Be sure to vote in our rankings program at PhoneDog.com slash rankings. You have a phone. You absolutely love it. We want to hear why you like it. Go vote. PhoneDog.com slash rankings. Leave a review, and you could win a phone. More details on that on the website at PhoneDog.com. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, PhoneDog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDogAB. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site for more coverage of the HTC One S and the HTC One X.